Hello and welcome to our presentation, our final presentation in this class about the commercialization of U.S. sports. We'll be going over everything from the original sports in the U.S. to how it spread via the media, how it spread into everybody's homes, and ultimately how the sport continues to make money. An interesting project idea and we hope to share it with you. I hope you enjoy our presentation of the commercialization of U.S. sports. Some of the earliest sports in America were games played by the Native Americans to help them with their skills for hunting, fishing, and war. When the colonists came over, they brought sports that were popular in England. Some of the games and sports include bowling, cricket, and cards. Two of the most popular individual sports brought over by the colonists were bowling and horse racing. To bowl, they altered the land to make 20 to 30 feet long grassy areas. They altered the sport of horse racing to make it different from England and allow more people to come and watch the races. The team sports brought over by the colonists were not as popular in America as they were in England. For example, cricket was extremely popular in England, but did not take off in America. And rugby was played here as well. However, we altered it to make our own type of sport, which is now known as American football. The sports played by the colonists often served as a distraction from work. In the early 1600s, there were many accounts of people not completing assigned tasks, but rather playing games. Also, not all people thought the distraction was a good thing. The Quakers and Puritans disapproved of the sports because they saw them as time-wasting entertainment. Sports took a back seat while the country was formed. Some sports were lost because they did not require the kinds of skills that colonists needed in everyday life. However, there were new games that were added because they helped them build on skills that were necessary to maintain life, such as shooting games or fishing games. In the 1820s and 1830s, sports were beginning to be seen in newspapers, but sports coverage was not consistent and it focused more on the social aspects of the game rather than the game itself. By the 19th century, newspapers became the primary medium for covering sports. Sporting organizations and clubs helped build communities around sports. Sports clubs are organizations that exist to promote and develop interest in a particular sport or physical activity. The focus of them can be recreational, instructional, competitive, or a combination of these. The first sporting club was the Maryland Jockey Club founded in Annapolis in 1743. Sports marketing began when companies tried to create brand credibility by associating with certain sports teams and athletes. Baseball stars were put on tobacco cards in the 1870s, and this was considered the first activity that was sports marketing. While the second half of the 19th century did bring a civil war as well as epidemics of cholera and yellow fever to the U.S., it also brought new sports. New sports were invented, such as baseball, as well as football, of course, inspired by already existing sports, and they became U.S. traditions. But in 1891, a Springfield College professor decided to come up with his own sport. Now, he himself was Canadian. However, the sport basketball that he did invent was invented in the United States. This, of course, another new sport created in the 19th century, and this one would also become an American tradition still played today, as explained further in this video clip. The game of basketball, as it is known today, was created by Dr. James Nysmith in December 1891 in Springfield, Massachusetts, to condition young athletes during cold months. Naismith was a Canadian physical education instructor at YMCA International Training School, now known as Springfield College, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Upon the request of his boss, Naismith was tasked to create an indoor sports game to help athletes keep in shape in cold weather. It consisted of peach baskets and a soccer-style ball. He divided his class of 18 into two teams of nine players each and set about to teach them the basics of his new game. The objective of the game was to throw the basketball into the fruit baskets nailed to the lower railing of the gym balcony. 
Seeing the successful athletics program of Springfield College, many other places followed suit, establishing basketball programs in different schools. However, athletics spread. Baseball teams were formed, as well as football teams, and many other teams were formed by high schoolers near and far. Of course, this wouldn't just stay at the high school or collegiate level, as professional teams were soon established. With the establishment of professional teams or any team in close proximity comes the establishment of rivalries and rivalries certainly sell the sport and help it dramatically. As teams became more widespread, larger populations became interested in sports. And finally, with more and more people accepting sports as a normal thing, it became commercialized. Collecting all started with tobacco. Young sports fans would watch their favorite teams and be exposed to tobacco products. Between the advertisements and endorsements for tobacco products, it caused sales to drive up and a newfound connection between sports and tobacco. This caused brands to have sponsors from favorite athletes and sports fans to follow these players' footsteps. As humans, we have an instinct to collect. Part of the reason for this instinct is because humans want to show loyalty to their team, country, or hometown. This starts to overlap with sports cards and collection because by collecting sports cards, it shows loyalty to your favorite team. The Industrial Revolution created an increase in production for sports collector items. This is especially true for apparel. Apparel became so popular because ticket sales increased and more people were going to games. They wanted to represent which team they were there for, and this started the phenomenon of wearing your favorite player's jersey to the game. Collection has also come from another source of something called consumerism. This is something that was influenced through the Industrial Revolution. Through consumerism, sales for different sports collector items drove up and has made a huge impact on sports and sales. The start of high school sports first started in 1862, when the first ever soccer game was played in Boston. The team was discontinued in 1865, but got the ball rolling for future organized sports in high school and for youth. Sports at one point were word of mouth. Once there was the ability to advertise sports teams and notify people when they were playing, ticket sales grew dramatically. What caused billboards to become so popular was that they could put other advertisements for products on the same billboard that would appeal to consumers and help sports sales. Online ticket sales increased with betting and gambling within sports. When there was access to online tickets for these types of events within sports, the online ticket market opened and sales became more popular and now most sports teams allow you to buy tickets online. When sports grew in popularity, the coverage on TV and radios only increased more. By giving more access and coverage to a lot more sports gave people more access to listen to these sports. With the coverage, it caused more sports become popular and more listeners and watchers because of the accessibility. The start of journalism. Sports journalism started with Henry Chadwick. He is considered to be the first full-fledged American sports writer. The first sports department in an American newspaper was created in 1895. In the 1830s, horse riding and boxing were the two sports that began sports journalism. Newspapers expanded to appeal to the new demographics consisting of middle-class city readers. This was also when newspapers began relying on advertising. The first game on the radio. A boxing match on April 11, 1921 on KDK, the first live radio broadcast in Pittsburgh, PA, consisted of a boxing match. First broadcast and live event on TV, May 17, 1939, the first sport event televised, a college baseball game by NBC in Columbia's Bakerfield, Massachusetts. Baseball, basketball, football, golf, hockey, and Olympic sports dominated American entertainment during the 1960s in the Major League, now offering professional seasons year-round, making news more exciting for fans. Professional football became the most popular sport in the U.S first NFL Super Bowl was played in January 1967. Modern day streaming. Today, anywhere online, it's easy to find live streams of ongoing games for free or with a paid subscription. Streaming apps are websites such as Hulu Plus, Twitter, Facebook, ESPN Plus, YouTube TV, Fubo TV, and Amazon Prime. Sports are much easier to stream today and available to most. 
Advertising and sports. Sports marketing started in 1870 in the hopes to boost sales. Tobacco cards would feature baseball stars to grab the attention of buyers, just like today with popular products. Advertising and sponsored tips helped pay for the cost of stadiums, the teams, and to keep prices of tickets for each fan at a lower cost. Commercials during broadcast. NFL have the most commercials during broadcasting. The average sports game contains at least 40 minutes of ads, not counting pregame or postgame shows. Around 25% of the NFL broadcast is commercials. There are 112 commercials per game. Transitioning from the broadcasts to the venues themselves, we look at trends over the past, well, 100 years. We see older stadiums such as Mellon Stadium in Pittsburgh, the Spectrum and Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia turn into corporate named places like PPG Paint, Wells Fargo and Lincoln Financial Field. And the fires are going. That call that you just heard coming from legendary sports announcer Lou Nolan, one of many corporate sayings said during games that, well, end up being ads that can be sold to different companies to own their spot. Arenas look to sell more than just the words announcers say, but then themselves also become advertisements. You can see what National Nationals Park in D.C. and George P. Miller Stadium in Indiana, Pennsylvania on campus, both of which sell ad space that companies bid for and the sport can make money. Shifting to the on-field or on-ice performance, as you can see in the top picture, companies can bid for the rights to make jerseys. The NHL has had seven companies in its existence. The NFL in its united existence had had nine, but the MLB leads the way with 27 companies. So you can see Adidas up top, Nike on the bottom. But teams will also auction off certain parts of their uniforms to make their fair share of the dough. On the left side of your screen, the Denver Nuggets donning the Western Union advertisements. And I include the NHL's helmet sponsors because they have recently approved jersey ads for the upcoming seasons. Keep an eye out for that. Shifting our focus from team specific deals we look at player deals and well when you look at good players you can't get much better than lebron james lebron james started off his financial success in high school with a fifteen thousand dollar contract with adidas and looking back on it that is one of the best contracts that a company can make he has since then sold parts of his stock to companies such as of course nike as well as epic games these companies and his financial rise being explored in the book the making of a billion dollar athlete lebron inc you know that guy in the top left corner looks quite handsome this will be wrapping up our presentation it's come a long way from those rugby games of old to jersey sponsors on teams that play games that didn't ex even exist that long ago but again that wraps up our presentation of the commercialization of u.s sports